Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing a movie review in the month of October of a teen horror comedy that's a cult classic, came out on July 31st, 1992, simply called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yes, plain and simple, a valley girl cheerleader was becoming the chosen one to slay vampires. And this 1992 film had would soon become a darker and acclaimed TV series that's on the WB and then later UPN with Sarah Michelle Gellar playing the role of Buffy. Yeah. But this movie version on the other hand stars Chrissy Swanson playing the role. Join in with uh, Luke Perry as Oliver Pike, you know, dance on the stress type soon to become her boyfriend. Um, join in with um, Paul Rubens, yes, from uh, PB's Playhouse, yeah, PB Herman himself. Got Donald Sullivan, who's the one that that chose uh, Buffy to train her, so that way he'll she'll be able to go around killing vampires. And Rector Howell who's the uh, head vampire who's about to go after Buffy well without this movie we would never have this more popular series that's created by Josh Wheaton uh, join in with uh, producer Kai Kazui with uh, his wife uh, Fran directing yeah. and the first time I saw the movie, I was only a kid. It was on HBO. I've heard about it, saw trailers, TV spots of the film, but I never got a chance to see it until later. And it's what it is. I mean, it's it's a silly, goofy horror comedy, but with, with its dark tones. I mean, just like any other teen comedies that you see. I mean. Just not taking itself too seriously. Yeah. Um, but plus, it also got a supporting cast joining in. You know, you got um, Hilary Swank playing one of the Bally girls of Buffy's friends. David Arquette, who played uh, uh, Luke Perry's uh, character's uh, friend. You also got Stephen Root, went on to do uh, the TV show uh, King of the Hill. And he also got other uh, actors like uh, Candy Clark you know, playing Buffy's mom, Ben Affleck in a very uh, uncredited role, uh, Ricky Lake also with Seth Green and Alexis Arquette, Natasha Grayson uh, Wagner, I mean, those actors. For only uh, a small budget of $7 million, um, the movie was shot in Los Angeles. It became a moderate box office success. I mean, I can see why it became a cult following over the years. Yeah, yeah this Blu ray came out in 2017, even though it, it, the Blu ray was a re repackaged version from 2011. But this was for its 25th anniversary edition, so that's why they gave it a, a different cover art. Everything's all pink. And you can just see Princess Swanson you know, holding the Slayer to stab all these vampires. Yeah. And the Blu-ray only carries just a featurette, theatrical trailer, and TV spots. So no, f no new features joining in, like new interviews with some of the cast members you know talking about the movie I mean so it, the only way you get to see it is on the featurette but this is the best you can do <laughs> and yes it does come with a digital copy which I already used already <laughs> of course um, yeah, and this is what the cover looks like for the blu-ray Okay. Um, 
and I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was just what I expected. And I saw the TV series later on when it aired on the WB, and then later they played on UPN. Of course, I didn't watch the show uh, very often, though. I only watched, like, just uh, some episodes here and there. Because I, I know most of the time I just watched like other shows uh, that was on TV at the time. So I, it's ahead of schedule here. Because I was in middle school. When it came, I mean, when the show came out. Or, well, I was still in elementary school, but then I later went to middle school. So, then high school and then all that. Um, but it was a cool series. I mean, it was dramatic, as it turned out. It's a very dark tone. Uh, I know Michelle Trackenberg played Buffy's sister uh, in the later seasons. So that worked. I had other um, cast members joining in, like uh, David Bornaretz, who went on to do the TV series Angel, and then later uh, Bones. And Allison Hannigan was in that show before How I Met Your Mother. But I know she was in the movie with Dan Aykroyd and Ken Basinger and John Lovitz in the comedy uh, My Stepmother's an Alien. <laughs> yeah. So I knew who she was. By comparison with the movie though, because comedies are subjected, I could definitely take the series uh, more seriously. In a way. And I can see why it worked. I mean, Josh Whedon actually brought in the humor into it, but also brought in a serious tone to discover who the character was. I mean, when she started out um, in a whole different direction as a sophomore, yeah, she was spoiled, selfish, very popular, but nevertheless, she was chosen to, to go around slaying vampires. And she was doing that uh, all this time during her high school days, before she became a senior. Yeah. But the movie, of course, takes place when Buffy is a senior. So that means that she's going to have a new life coming from the head of her. And anyway, let's get to the film. It stars Christy Swanson, best known for films like uh, when she played Sam Yes, Manfud in the movie by Wes Craven, The Deadly Friend. Yes, she was also had her film debut in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, uh, among others. Yeah. Luke Perry just recently passed away. Uh, best known for playing Dylan in the TV show, yeah, the long running series, uh, Beverly Hills 91210. Rector Howe also passed away. Um, Always been best known for other films in, in his career, like Blade Runner, The Hitcher, uh, Wanted Dead or Alive, Hobo with a Shotgun, a Split Second, uh, one others. Donald Sullivan, he has been, he's also the father of, of Kiefer Sullivan. Yeah, he's been in movies like uh, The Great Train Robbery. Um, as well as uh, the Puppet Masters, no, a different kind of Puppet Masters, by the way, the, the movie. Uh, he's also been in um, he's also been in uh, the movie with uh, Sylvester Stallone called Lock Up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and of course the horror film uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, yeah, the, f the first remake from the seventies. Yeah, Paul Rubens, best known for playing Pee Wee Herman. Speaking of which, though, I mean, this would have been at the time when um, Rubens um, got, actually got arrested for indecent exposure. Yeah, because uh, he was masturbating at a local porno theater. So it, it might have had happened like after he filmed this movie, you know, his character, and then plus, you know, he had a small role in Batman Returns. As the penguin's father. So I guess uh, in that sort of way, that was just uh, something we didn't expect to see. But this was a cool role for him, quite different. Hilary Swank and her 
in one of her earlier roles. Yeah, long before she went on to do The Next Karate Kid, but then she went on to to do uh, Boys Don't Cry. Yeah. The Affair of the Necklace. And among other films. Paris Bong, Michelle Adams, Rando, Buttonkoff, David Arquette, yes. Went on to do um, all the screen films. Never Been Kiss. Uh, among others. Also, C Spot Run, that comedy. Stephen Root, King of the Hill. Natasha Grayson Ragnar, the daughter of Natalie Wood. Um, not to mention the actor uh, Richard Grayson, and I believe uh, Robert Ragnar for that matter. And I know she later went on to do the film called um, Two Girls and a Guy with uh, Robert Downey Jr. Candy Clark, yes, Candy Clark from Q the Wind Serpent, along with um, Blue Thunder and The Blob, 1988, the remake. Yeah, Ben Affleck went on to spot a future career in him with films like the Kevin Smith movies and all that. Ricky Lake, and from John, from the John Rogers films such, such as Hairspray, and Serial Mom, Seth Green. Yeah, I've been in many stuff that, in his career, doing Robo Chicken, appeared in the Awesome Power movies, and made a lot of uh, movie and TV appearances. Yeah. Alexa Arquette, no longer with us. Uh, I know he was in Pulp Fiction, as well as uh, the Wedding Singer. It's written by Josh Wheaton, who spawned a career, the one who created Buffy, and also went on to write the movie Alien Resurrection, and also did the series uh, Angel and, and Firefly. And of course, he also uh, directed uh, The Avengers, um, Marvel's The Avengers, that is. And it's directed by Fran Rubal Kazooie. The movie begins when we meet Buffy Summers, a high school senior who's a ballet girl cheerleader at Hemery High School in Los Angeles, California, played by Christy Swanson, where her main concern was to go shopping, hanging around with her best friends, you know, with, with their rich and snooty attitude. Yeah, all of them were played by, yeah, like Kimberly Handa, Nikki, Jennifer and even Cassandra, played by Pillar Swank, Paris Bong, Michelle Abrams, and Natasha Grayson Wagner. And she also has a boyfriend named Jeffrey, played by Rando Benikoff. So, yeah, they go around um, at a local shopping mall, which is actually shot in, in Burbank, California, the, which is now known as Burbank Town Center, the yeah, Media City Center. Then they went to go um, to a local movie theater to you know watch whatever movie they are. They actually bumped into uh, two uh, young guys, uh, Oliver Pike and Benny, both played by Luke Perry and David Arquette. Yeah, yeah, they were the ones that they were talking on screen, even though they were chatting around too. <laughs> they they were later meet uh, at a local bar too. During that one day at school, she was approached by an old man who's the watcher known as uh, Merrick, who's played by Donald Sullivan, who she actually bumped into uh, earlier at the shopping mall, just getting into the elevator. He informs her that she's the chosen one, known as the Slayer, destined to kill vampires around. It's his job to guide and train her, you know, doing all these... Uh, acrobatic moves because yeah, I know she does do her um, her tumbling after all she is a cheerleader does all these cheerleading tryouts uh, with her friends but she also taken gymnastics she initially rejects uh, his claim but convinced that he is right the whole time when he's be able to describe a recurring dream of hers that's taken directly from ancient uh, Europe 
which that's where we meet um, a vampire slayer. Might be one of uh, Buffy's ancestors who goes around, you know, slaying all these vampires. Which that's where we meet um, the head vampire named Lorfos, played by Rector Howe, joins in with um, his psychic, Amelyn, played by Paul Rubens. Buffy's been exhibiting with her uncanny abilities, not knowing to her with her heightened agility, senses, and endurance, but she does repeatedly try Merrick's patience with furious nature, indifference to slain, and sharp tongue remarks going around. But once Lorfos um, came along just to, to hire uh, Amelyn and going around, you know, joining in with all these other vampires after he started to uh, suck their blood uh, because he also uh, sucked the blood out of Benny uh, just when they were at the Hollywood Hills you know drinking you know just hanging around Pike is being saved by Merrick as they're laying on the ground uh, but then Benny visits Pike and tries to get him to join in but that didn't work out, <laughs> as it seems. But later on, Pike and his boss are discussing Benny, and Pike tells him that he sees him completely. And then later, Emmeline had abducted uh, Cassandra, which then soon he'll she'll become sacrificed to Lofos. So now she'll become one of them. That's where everything is no longer safe. Because now Pike realized what's going on with uh, Benny, and then sooner or later, Amblin started chasing Pike around and attacking him um, through his band. He tries to run over him you know, through the trees, but but then soon the Amblin was on top, was ready to grab him, but then lost his arm. And next thing you know. Buffy came to the rescue to um, stabbing him in the heart with a wooden uh, slayer. So throughout the couple weeks though, you know, she's been mostly training and be able to stop all these vampires and having trouble having to focus on her cheerleading tryouts with her friends for having a local basketball team going around. Then she spotted uh, one of her friends actually turned into a vampire was a basketball player and trying to make the shots and, and all that and then that's when Buffy was about to chase after her. Pike joins in too uh, for their motorcycles and then and then later um, Lofos uh, came by joining in with uh, Amelie after Buffy kills him and after Buffy kills him and you know, joining in with uh, Pike, because Pike was up there saving the day, you know, trying to save her butt and everything. Uh, that's when, the, um, yeah, that's when. Anyway, that's when Merrick uh, shows up, because uh, they went up at the uh, the Pasadena um, Rose Bowl uh, where they were sitting up for these. Um, yeah, it was the Rose Bowl lot where they're setting up all these, um, all these floats, you know, because you know pretty soon, when it's New Year's, I mean, they'll be able to show up for it. Well, Merrick got killed, got stabbed uh, in the heart, uh, got stabbed in the chest by Lorfos through his own knife, which of course he, the same knife that he actually threw. At Buffy, just when she captures it and and she does that line, you threw a knife at my head, and then he said, and you caught it. <laughs> yeah. Also punches him in the face too, and and she says, I never punched someone before. I didn't even break a nail. <laughs> okay, uh, but yeah, she, he was killed, and sooner or later, since he already lost. Um, Merrick, because of her new life that she's having, I mean, she has to deal with her responsibilities, and 
She became very emotionally shocked, neglecting her, her slayer duties and also to note that yes, it was going to be a high school senior prom coming up and I wasn't so sure if this was going to happen. But she was about to explain to her friends that the, another reason why she wasn't showing up very much was because, well, she noticed that she's been the, she's been doing her slaying duties uh, to stop all these vampires, but they wouldn't believe her and wasn't so sure about going to the dance or even working out, but so they weren't uh, speaking to each other for a while. So things just made up. Um, once the the senior uh, prom dance uh, arrives, so uh, that's yeah, you know, she had a prom dress, you know, dressing up. She began to learn that uh, her boyfriend Jeffrey is is seeing someone else after uh, he broke up because they didn't get a chance to hang out for a while. So so now uh, she's all alone until. Pike came along and just getting ready for the dance until all the vampires arrive and starts attacking the entire school. But it was up to Buffy joining in with Pike to save the night by stopping the uh, Lorfos, Amberlynn, and and the rest of these vampires around. So yeah, that's the movie. Um, Guys, say it's it's fun. I mean, not not uh, not to take itself too seriously, but I guess I could see what they were. But that's exactly what they were going to go for for a teen uh, for a teen horror comedy. But I had to say, Chrissy Swanson uh, was very strong, um, even though she is playing a, a teenage girl with a uh, a very spoiled. Um, snooty attitude that she has, I mean, the way she talks, I mean, because, you know, she's the kind of ballet girl that you have to deal with, I mean, but next thing you know, I mean, she, with all the training uh, coming from, uh, coming from the Watcher, Merrick, played by Donald Sullivan, she now becomes more stronger than ever before. And the fact that she started doing all her tumbling, doing all these uh, acrobatic moves, you know, all the flips and, um, well, mostly uh, flip-flops and <laughs> and all the high kicks and stuff. I mean, she she really got in her. I mean, even with her attitude. And uh, Luke Perry was was great as um, Pike. I mean, at first, you know, they didn't get along as it turned out, but then. But he did became the dancer in distress, so it's sort of like a world reversal right there. But it worked <laughs> in a way. But I thought he was great in, in the movie. And having them together, you know, fighting those vampires really worked. Uh, Rector Howe was also um, excellent as Lofos, the head vampire. I mean, you could tell he was having fun playing that role. I like that moment when Lofos was playing with his fiddle and trying to get uh, the girl's attention. I mean, first Cassandra, and then later he was trying to do that with Buffy, but <laughs> and was ready to uh, to suck her blood. But of course, Buffy just attacks. Oh, Sullivan was also excellent too as Merrick. Um, because he was the guy to to help Buffy uh, stop him. And Paul Rubens, however, was hilarious. Um, he really stole the show as Amberlynn. Definitely. I mean, I, I love the, the the funny moment where when he got stabbed uh, by Buffy with a ruler. <laughs> he keeps like uh, <laughs> he keeps like uh, doing all of his uh, dying acts, uh, grunting a lot and. <laughs> Like he was ready to die, but he just keeps on going and going on and on and on. <laughs> he does have a lot of funny dialogue that he went into. So this this is really uh, this is the character that he was really born to play to after you know playing Pee Wee Herman a lot. 
I mean, it really shows that he can actually do something like that. Um, as for the rest of the supporting cast, I mean, you know, it's great to see them in their earlier roles, so, like Hilary Swank, for instance. Uh, yeah, just playing s basically a b bit of a, uh, a dimwit at times, but of course that's what she... But so was her friends. I mean, they were all belly girls. And you got Stephen Root uh, playing the principal uh, who go goes around, you know, giving everyone detention and does her, does his job very well. Uh, you got Candy Clark playing Buffy's mom. I mean, it only shows up in in certain scenes. David Arquette was also uh, fun too to, to watch. I mean, he plays Benny Jacks to. You know, Luke Perry's character, Oliver Price's best friend, and, and it looked like he was really having fun when he's a when he becomes a vampire. <laughs> so, wow. Um. Uh, but back to Buffy, though. Yeah, I mean, she was uh, very tough. Uh, even she has her awesome moments too, where she actually uh, takes out uh, one of those, uh, you know, one of those bulletin board pins. And she actually uh, puts it in her mouth and spits it uh, while she was at the principal's office, uh, and actually kills a fly. <laughs> and she does all these uh, awesome moves here and there, and stabs uh, all these vampires, everything. I mean, this this was a tough but great role for her. I mean, before um, Sarah Michelle Gellar joins in. <laughs> I always love uh, Chris Swanson, though. Uh, and yes, um, it's all shot in Los Angeles. I mean, they, the the movie was actually shot at John Marshall High School, um, with the gymnasium being shot at uh, at University High School in West Los Angeles, and they and all these other locations and. Not to mention, this movie was made uh, for a small budget due to the popularity of Luke Perry, you know, playing Dylan and Beverly Hills 90210. And this was actually produced by Dolly Parton's production company, uh, Sand Dollar, yeah, with um, Kyle Kazooie's uh, production company, uh, Kazooie Enterprises. So they joined in with Josh Whedon. I mean, he, he wrote like a lot of tremendous dialogue throwing in and the actual setting of the story. The story, however, is exactly as we expected, you know, which is very simple, but it can work well for a teen horror comedy. But it can also work even better as a dramatic um, and darker series, which is a better follow up to it. Um, but hey, you know. I like both. I mean, there's nothing wrong with liking both. I mean, they're both different animals here. You know, comedies and and dramas here. <laughs> so. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because I, I like both of them. Silly, goofy, but with a dark um, charm to it. And it's, it's also a guilty pleasure too. So that's why I, I enjoy the film. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the, the horror comedy with a lot of bite. <laughs> and slaying, too. There, and I give the movie four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.